Hey, Jim here from K2 Concepts. We're shooting the third video of the day. Uh, the first one was on uh, viscosity of uh, the one-hit wonder. The second was uh, uh, how to set up your gun so you can lay it down properly. And this will be the third video. Now this one we're going to show you guys what it should look like when you're in the paint booth and you're laying it down. Because uh, there's some confusion. I think that uh, most of it is some of the guys are, are improper gun setup and you're maybe laying it down too thick. Uh, but uh, Jason's here and he's got the gun set up and we're going to lay it down on a couple speed shapes real quick and uh, once, they're, once they're done, uh, once they're dry, we're going to go in the tank and we'll demonstrate the application and you know uh, proper technique, laying down activator and stuff like that. So anyhow, with that being said, uh, uh, another Corona, there's a, <laughs> getting a little fuzzy now. <laughs> But a little Corona for the haters, and uh, Jason, uh, take it away. Oh, and just remember, again, we're, this is a standard practice, but he is painting without a mask, so he can talk you through it, and we don't have the fan on. So we may move in and out, in and out of the booth. We know it's not the proper technique. Don't rain hate down on us. We're just trying to, to, to generate a video that, that can walk you through the process, and we're not going to be able to do it if we got to talk through a mask or the fan's on and you can't hear us. So. That's it, take it away. Well, what we've got is, uh, in the second video we shot, we've, we've, we've put white in the gun now. We've got exactly the same gun set up. A nice even fan, nice misting. Uh, <coughs> I want to just make sure the dyes are applying this paint properly. Um, what I always do is just give the part a quick flow. There's no paint coming out. Quick, quick flow of uh, air, and that will take any residual dust after we've... Uh, Added the uh, added ones we've taken the tack off. So, what I'm going to do now is we're going to apply the first coat <laughs> of paint. What do you do first? Nice and fast. <laughs> nice and even on and off the trigger. Nice and slow pass. It's not, you're not stabbing at it. So, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get a nice edge around the part <laughs> and then a single coat. Let me kick the fan on real quick. Tip you up. <laughs> for this first coat to flash. You can see it's pretty much flashed already. It's got some pretty good coverage. Um, we're going to go ahead and just add another coat on now just for the sake of time. You can see it, it's covered pretty good. So we're going to add the second coat now. Again, hit the edges first and then two nice big even coats across the top. As you can see, that, that's kind of what you're looking at. We've got, we've got the gun set up um, as we explained in the last video. A good little bit of uh, a good little bit of uh, paint coming out onto it, but it's important that we leave those flash times in between coats to about five to ten minutes just so it dulls off a little bit. That's how we paint all our parts at our shop. Um, we'll, let it, uh, we'll let it dry for 20 to 30 minutes now. Uh, it's 65 degrees here. It's about 65, 670 degrees. 20 minutes time to half an hour time we'll be able to dip these parts. Um, we've got some new colors to introduce as well, so I'm going to go ahead and get started painting these and uh, we'll catch you in the next video. Um, one thing I want to point out, so, so it's, it's glossy, it's glassing out, but yet it's not real heavy, so is it, I guess my question would be is when somebody uh, is laying it down too heavy, it's a possibility that maybe their gun's not set up correctly? And yeah, I mean every gun, is, it on. every gun is different. Um, a lot of the time your needle can be adjusted too far out, in which case you're just going to load tons and tons of paint. Many guns, you know, we suggest the needle is all the way out uh, with a turn in for, you know, we call that full flow. Um, this particular gun, the manufacturer or the representative was with us and they suggested that for this particular gun that the, uh, the needle's all the way in and then wound out two and three quarter turns. So that's what we have it set up to now. It seems to have a good coverage. Um, it's not too light. Like I say, we can usually do this with one or two coats, white on black. Um, you really need to understand your gun. Look at manufacturer setups. Our paint is designed to flow the same way as a base coat for a manufacturer, um, as a base clear. So 
you should be able to set up the gun to the manufacturer's specifications as they say for, for a base coat, which is 20 to 25 pounds, and the needle setting is crucial. But it, a lot of it is to just understand your gun and adjust your gun until you know you're getting a good coverage with not too much pain. Like we say, it's about getting a color on the part and not getting a lot of pain. Well, so I guess um, if I was an inexperienced painter, um, from what I'm understanding with the way you get set up the gun, that the needle depth is almost like a governor on a carburetor. You're, you're stopping that trigger at a certain point. Right. So would they be better off if they don't know how to work the trigger or they're a little inexperienced, I, maybe I, use that a little bit more than the, the, the trigger? Yeah, I would say, I mean, if, if, if you haven't painted a lot, maybe wind your needle all the way in and back it out a turn, see what your coverage is like. You can see on that that we were getting almost full coverage on the first pass. If you need a second pass, go ahead. If you're a little bit more confident, just wind out your, your needle half a turn every attempt. You want to be able to get the part, I would say 80% coverage on the first coat. But you, it, it's important to come on and off the trigger and, and move the, the gun in a way that, and I'll just show you quickly, it, it's important that the gun follows the path of the part. So you don't want to be painting like this. You want the gun to follow the path of the part as much as you can. Uh -huh. This is why we put it on sticks, because we can easily move the part around. Um, if you start painting like this, you're going to get a buildup of paint in the center and very light on the edges. And, and usually, it's not a, so much the, the amount of paint. Sometimes it's, it's the method that is being applied, and the paint, paint will build up in certain parts yes. on the part. Yes. What we train is that we hit the edges of the part, that's the most difficult part, and then we can lay one or two flashes over, over the, the main area, which, which will even out the paint levels. So yes, it's important that you know you understand your gun. All guns spray different. You know, we, we've, we've trained with the Warwicks, we've trained with the Huskies, and the, those two guns put out a lot of material. So we can't just, you know, generalize by saying we're going to just pull it out all the way and then one turn in because different guns are different. Sada's are different, uh, two Iwata's, which are different to the this and, and so on. So it's a matter of getting the color on the part as efficiently as possible. Um, it helps you dip better and it helps you be more confident with our paint. And, you know, we're, we're in the business of you being successful dippers rather than shifting as much paint as we can. Well, I guess so. so the point that I'm getting out of all of this as we go through and we, we, and we, we, we show them how the paint should look, viscosity, how to set up the gun, they're going to have to do a little more due diligence than just pulling the trigger on the paint. They're going to have to work on their technique, they're going to have to make sure that their gun is set up properly, not just dump your paint in there and start pulling the trigger. It's going to take yeah, not a lot more work, but a little more due diligence on Yes, and, and you know, our, our paint is... It, it, it's a professional grade paint. It's not an artist paint. It's not a house paint. It's a professional grade automotive based paint. And they behave very unforgivingly if they're applied um, sloppily or in a hurry or it, it, without knowledge. So it is a little bit more time to get your gun set up. But generally, once your gun's set up, you'll know you'll be able to go in and hit a hit part 100% every single time. Um, I guess uh, uh, we used to have a saying in our industry, finish like a pro, flat, remember the flat. So just like this industry, um, they're going to have to do a little work. They're going to have to uh, learn their gun, learn the setup, and, and also work on their technique, not just slamming it down, but working on, like you said, following the, the part. Work on your technique, even not just distance, hammer it down. Even angles uh, that comes with activator application, clear coat application, you need to... Um, you need to spray like a roadblock. You need to be a roadblock. And once you get that application down for your, your paint and your activator and your dipping, you'll begin to start enjoying dipping instead of being nervous about going to the tank yep. every time. Yep. I agree. And it's just confidence building. No, yeah. No, I mean, that's the biggest thing. You, you, you get to a point where you expect a good hit. You expect excellence. And, exactly. you know, and if it doesn't happen, it should be more, more of a rarity than, you know. Yeah, I, I think it, it, it gives you a little bit more confidence to take on some maybe more complicated or bigger parts with some more complicated patterns. And, um, you know, the, 
it's it's prep. It's prep, it's application, it's step by step, it's baking cake, and you can't mean it. You can't make it up. It, but when when you follow the rules and follow the instructions and follow the me application methods, there's no reason why it will change from one day to the other. That's good. Good information. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, that's it for this one. Uh, if I can say anything to help you guys remember what we talked about, finish like a pro. Flat. Finish like a pro. So, you guys, you have to do due diligence. Um, that means working on yourself, working on how you apply your technique, paying attention to how your guns are set up, how your uh, air delivery system, it's, it's all of it. You can't just go in and start shooting this thing and then experiencing problems and blame it because or blame it on the paint or blame it on the gun and you guys have to start doing a little due diligence and so and that's kind of why we shot this video uh, the other thing is that we're getting educated too uh, Brett who's behind the camera and myself um, with with this product we think it's a good product it's got a, a really bright future in our industry uh, but we also want to provide support for the guys that, that are using it and you know do have the problem so that's why we're shooting a series of videos and that's why we're going to be there on forum at uh, k2forums.com to uh, support jason and the, and the one hit wonder uh, paint so anyhow that's it for this one uh we'll probably shoot one or two more videos we will be doing a giveaway pretty soon uh so stay tuned and we'll look forward to talking hope you have a good day dipping